Hey guys, so today we're going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, what are some more advanced tools that you need to learn as a front-end developer? So let's get into it. Now, let's start off by just touching on what somebody may or may not mean by advanced tools because there are, there are quite a few, depending on your definition, there are quite a few de like advanced tools. I would say that Webpack could probably be considered an advanced tool, depending on your definition. But uh, to give this little question of mine more context, I'm just going to mention that the person in question was very interested in specifically the different like the developer tools that come with that are shipped with chrome or google uh, google chrome basically and we're talking about profilers and this sort of thing so let's have a little bit of a talk about this so one of the things that um, before we dive into all of that because i want you to have some context first and foremost so one thing that you should be aware of is that when it comes to software development, and especially when it's front-end development, um, things usually start out with you learning CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, and so forth, and you get... Sooner or later, you're gonna get to a point where this feels like old hat. Sooner or later, you're going to be good enough at this stuff that it doesn't really... I mean, it's just another day at the job, right? It's not just another day. Um, but when you, depending on which size of project you go to, unless you stay at very, very small companies or very st stay on fairly small projects, and I'm talking small projects is something that is like the lifespan of the project is less than a year or a year, I could work two years, maybe something like that. We're not talking a software company or an IT company. We're talking about you building a application for a client shipping that and then you go on to the next client that's not long term so when you get to those sorts of of projects things will start to pile up on you and you're very likely to be faced and this can of course happen on any project but you're very likely to face what i call more advanced problems with with well well it doesn't have to just be front end a good example of this is when the project has grown to such a size that there's enough legacy and other issues that it affects your overall productivity. Or maybe you want to figure out how much JavaScript you're sending to the client, things of this nature. My favorite example from my own life is probably that I have a build pipeline that takes 30 minutes due to how long it actually takes Webpack to bundle and transpile and do all of this good stuff for for one of the projects now that is an immense amount of time to run a build pipe for those of you who may like i mean if you you can just try it yourself your own projects you have on your computer how long does it take for you to run webpack through that i'm guessing not 30 minutes well total at least so what this person is now asking kind of touching on is something that i'm not touched on myself all that much in these videos of mine because it is it is a later step for most of you and that is when you need to actually know the engineering part or actually be a how do i put this when you have to have in-depth knowledge about the tools that you use and how they actually work. This is when this starts to get relevant because when you get to this sort of problem, it's still your job. It's still considered to be like, this is why I think it's so hilarious when some people tell me that front-end is just about jQuery and CSS and HTML. And I kind of go, no, it is not. When you have this sort of problem, when your boss comes in and says, hey, we we're facing a productivity, like a company-wide productivity issue due to how poorly our front-end build works, fix it. Then it's your job to fix it. And that's when being more in-depth and having a good understanding of Node, how Webpack works, processes, loaders, how performance works, and being able to do profiling, which is what I'm gonna talk about. That's when this gets important and you have to know this stuff at that stage. As a junior, not so much, but when you get to be a little bit more mid-level or like higher than that, you need to figure this out. 
it's as I said guys this idea that JavaScript land and all that stuff is all about what's happening on the UI is absolute bullshit it is not it's a lot more complicated than that so tools such as the memory profiler like my personal favorite tools what I use is of course the inspector node inspect is a very very useful or like the chrome inspector is very very useful to debug these sorts of processes so that's something you should absolutely have a look at to be able to this is especially true when you're trying to figure out I mean if you're just debugging your own, your own code that's just that thing right there is an amazing amazing supplement to your skill set or to your toolkit so being able to debug a Node.js server through Chrome is, I mean, I'm very, I could use, uh, you may not remember this, but it used to be the case you didn't have that. You had a very, very basic debugger back in the day, but, and you had a few projects that kind of did this, but this is so much better. I'm so happy that they added that in. Other things that you should have a look at is, especially when you're debugging, performance issues such as what I'm talking about like when things are taking too long or more specifically we have memory issues as well where hey webpack takes too much memory how do we figure out that well then you need to have a look at making heap dumps that's also a part of it so being able to understand memory to being able to understand how to measure how much time you spend on the CPU for each task and then burrow down into the like these tabs are all in Chrome, they, they're in Mozilla, I think they're in Mozilla as well. And being able to actually figure, understand what does it actually mean to run a function on your CPU? Like why is it taking so long? And figure out what are the heavy tasks, what are, who, are the, who are the culprits? These are sort of the sorts of things that you need to go into when, well, as I said, when you get a little bit further ahead in your career and you're forced to, because trust me, this every single project that you're gonna be on is gonna have some flavor of these sorts of more advanced issues. Most likely, at least at the bigger, when it's a bigger project, because bigger projects usually have these sorts of problems. It's not so common in small projects. So these things are very, very useful to you. So understanding memory, understanding how like the CPU works and like what tasks are heavy, what tasks are not so heavy and how to kind of mitigate that sort of thing. And then you have, of course, bundle sizes to figure out, okay, because memory, that's what's interesting about CPU in specifically in Webpack is that it can be due to a slow loader. It can also be due to the amount of stuff that you're loading so you need to have a look at being able to analyze, analyze bundles so webpack's bundle analyzer is a very very good tool a more advanced tool if you will where you can uh, get a very nice interface that shows okay these are the bundles that you have and then you can kind of figure out what you're actually loading into your application these sorts of things and then you can of course have uh, other things such as you know, if you want to do load testing, that's also very useful to be able to understand how to load test a, a server. And there are many ways that you can do this. My favorite one is AutoCannon. It's a very nice tool that helps with that a lot. But these, uh, these are the sorts of things that are a little bit more advanced and the sort of things that you're not going to face as a complete beginner, but they are things that if you spend a few years working, you're going to be expected to be able to figure this stuff out. So what I want you to take away from this is that when it comes to more advanced tooling, quote unquote, it has less to do with frameworks like React and jQuery and you know Angular. These sorts of things are usually at the lower end of what you require of somebody to be a front-end developer. It's something that most people are expected to know at the, even as a junior. But when you get a little bit more advanced, things such as being able to profile memory usage see, and being able to profile CPU time and this sort of stuff, and really understanding how Node works and how Webpack works, for example, there are other tools, of course, and being able to figure out these sorts of issues becomes a lot more important. And then you have page speed time, like a page load time, uh, these sorts of things, being able to, be able to profile a web page, and of course, being able to understand load testing, this sort of thing. And then other, you know what I mean? There's tons and tons of this stuff, but this should at least get you started. So these are the, the sorts of things that more advanced front-end development is about. It has very little to do with the UI, actually. Have a great day.